Hello, beautiful souls. And because you've always been so highly empathic, it's like you absorbed all of that heaviness, all of that pain, all of that shadow into your being. And I'm hearing it's almost like you became like a filter for it. It's like you would take in the darkness, and your being would filter out the darkness, and turn it into light, transmute it into light. And this actually began by taking the darkness that you picked up from others, and transmuting it into light within yourself. So, this is a very dense and heavy process. It's also very gradual in 3D terms, so there may have been times where you were very frustrated by yourself, at yourself, because you may have thought that you should have been able to heal faster, to move faster. In fact, someone I'm speaking to, you might still feel this way. You might wonder why are these heavy patterns coming back up? Why is this darkness? Why is this pain coming back up? And know that it doesn't speak to a weakness within you, but a strength about you that was so profound at a deep core spiritual level and ancientness about you. So much so that you decided as this strong ancient soul that you are to take on much more heaviness and darkness and shadow than most people experience in order to begin transmuting it into light. And know that this is one of the most challenging paths you can possibly take on as a soul. I'm hearing the word narcissist or narcissism. So, someone I'm specifically speaking to here may have attracted a lot of narcissists into their life, family-wise, friend-wise, and relationships. Or there may have been one specific narcissistic personality type that negatively impacted you in your life and caused a lot of this darkness or pain for you. Or you may have absorbed a lot of their darkness and pain. And again, take this as it resonates. This is a very heavy and intense message, and I don't feel this will be for everyone. But for whoever I'm speaking to, know that you are, in a sense, like this physical filter for energy. So, just like a filter has to be cleaned, you need that time to unravel, to unwind, to recharge yourself. Because what I see is that when you go out and about in environments physically, when you put yourself around others, even if you are doing something that you would consider very mundane or very non-spiritual, quote unquote, although everything really is spiritual because we're spirit here having this physical material experience. However, I'm picking up you could be doing something as simple as grocery shopping, picking your kids up from school, taking your dog for a walk, going out somewhere with friends. But whenever you, again, I just keep hearing, touching your energy, being present with your energy is a privilege. And what I meant by that when I said that earlier is when you are out and about in spaces, places, environments around people, just your energetic presence there acts like this filter for darker, for heavier energies, from divine muscular. Type yes, if you believe. My beloved love. So it's like you being there almost like raises the vibration, clears some of the air, some of the atmosphere of this heavy negative energy. And that's what people mean when I feel you've had someone, possibly someone romantic, tell you that your smile lights up the room or your energy lights up the room, or that you're mesmerizing, or that when you walk into a room, things just look brighter or you just brighten people's day. Now, if no one's told you that, still know that it's true. And that if someone hasn't told you that, they might not be telling you that because there also can be some jealous energies around you, as well who haven't carved out the kind of capacity within themselves to carry so much light. And they might be jealous of your light without realizing the amount of pain and hardship and shadow you had to experience to carve out this space for that light. I'm getting the word lucky. So other people might actually mistakenly look at you and just believe that you're lucky to either have what you have, to do what you do, or just to be so radiant. And so happy at times to carry this very light energy, whatever that means for you. But people might misjudge you and not realize that you're actually someone who has been through a tremendous amount of darkness. I'm getting that people underestimate you. In some cases, if you're a divine feminine, this may be because you might have an appearance that is traditionally softer or traditionally more feminine, or there's something about your appearance that might make people assume that you are somehow weaker or not capable of handling darkness or shadow. But you actually have the spirit of a warrior, 
You are someone who knows how to put up a fight, who knows how to stand her ground, how to face again a tremendous amount of darkness, and that is why you're able to carry so much light. That is why you have such a strong and resilient spirit. But all of this being said, wow, I don't even think I can call that all a side message, even though that's how it started. I don't know who that was for. I feel that may have just been for a small group of people. But if that was for you, I do hope that message reached you. I feel it was really important for someone to hear. If that message was for you as well, I would love to hear from you in the comments. So, circling back to this masculine, who is processing consciously or subconsciously all of that about you, which, because this is a soul connection, all of this is being communicated telepathically. But I feel the masculine is somewhat skeptical of what he is receiving telepathically from you. He's wondering, like, am I crazy for feeling like I understand this divine feminine, for feeling like I know her and know what she's gone through? and know her spirit even when the two of us may not have communicated that much physically in the physical 3D world. And of course, take this as it does resonate, because for some of you, this may be someone you have communicated with quite a bit physically in 3D, from Divine Muscular. Type yes if you believe.